quick review, we're talking about changing your mind. Changing your mind. How do we transform our minds? How do we get a, our minds from obsessive thoughts, worrisome thoughts, negative thoughts, and transform them so that we're thinking godly thoughts, peaceful thoughts, things like that. And today we're going to look at discovering your ungodly or your unbiblical beliefs. Okay, but first, really quick uh, um, review. There it is, review. Uh, we, there are six, six obstacles we discovered to transformation. Before we even try to start changing the, our thinking, we have to come up, uh, we have to deal with these six obstacles. Well, number one, preconceived ideas, because they cause us to prejudge situations, okay? Uh, we had that, you can go in detail, get that teaching from a few weeks ago. Biases and prejudices, because they cause us to prejudge people. So we're not open to other people. Anger and hostility because it causes us to react to people rather than to hear what they have to say. Uh, Self-focus because it closes our minds to other people's perceptions and insights. Impatience because it causes us to reject the process of transformation which always takes time. And fear because it distorts our perception of reality. Fear is such a robber because it always distorts our perception of what's really going on. Well, then we looked very quickly. We looked at uh, ungodly thoughts and beliefs, and we discovered that what are ungodly thoughts and beliefs? They are anything that we think or believe that are not in agreement with God's word, God's nature, or God's character. Okay? You should have all that in your notes. If you don't, there's notes in the foyer. But anything we believe, think or believe, that are not in agreement with God's word, God's nature, or God's character. Um, where do these ungodly thoughts and beliefs come from? We discovered that they come from influential people in our lives, like mom and dad or our teachers that said, well, this is the way life is, and this, you're just going to have to accept it. Well, a lot of times that's not true, right? But also they come from our personal experiences, where we uh, experience something that, we, that forms a belief. That, you know, if you were uh, treated meanly by a person of a certain culture or even a certain sex, you might get an ungodly belief that says people of that gender or that uh, culture are going to be like that. And we prejudge them. We develop, an, uh, a, from our personal experiences, ungodly beliefs, okay? And... Um, we have to deal with them. Why do we have to deal with them? Because they determine our expectations. I can have expectations in advance before I even meet you. If I have an ungodly belief and you walk in the room, I will have an expectation about your type of person, right? So we have to deal with them. Why else? Because they also determine our experiences, right? What we believe we tend to receive. We actually, it's almost like a magnet. We attract to ourselves those things we, we believe, so we experience them. They erode our faith. They distort our view of God, okay, and, and of other people. We talked about that. They damage our relationships. They determine our actions, they, our perceptions, and even our identity as human beings and as Christians. And they can even put us into agreement with the devil because the devil's a liar. When you believe a lie, now you're in agreement with the devil who's a liar, okay? So, uh, and then we one last thing, a quick summary, just because it's been a few weeks getting through this series, but we're now on track. We looked at the shame, fear, control cycle, and we looked at the shame, blame, maim cycle. That's my words. I, you got a better words. Anyway, you can find that all online in this series. But we discovered that these ungodly thought cycles, damaging thought cycles, damage our lives and our relationships. So now that we have all that information, right? Now we have all that information. Hopefully, we're going to be, number one, motivated to want to change our thoughts, pursue transformation in our minds. And, and, and that starts with changing what we believe and what we think. Transformation always starts in the head, right? With what we think and what we believe. As the Bible says in Romans 12, verse 2, do not conform any longer to the pattern of this mind, okay, this, this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Be transformed not by the renewing of your spirits or your souls as such, but be, go after the mind. So much of our, uh, uh, the things we carry in life that are damaging to us are in our thoughts and our beliefs. So then, then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is, is good, pleasing, and perfect will. Okay, we'll be able to, to know what's good, what's, be what's best. We'll be able to uh, serve and honor God and each other 
and not have the regret that we would have if we had all this clutter and negative thinking in our mind. So how, so we're going to talk about pursuing transformation today, and we're going to talk in detail next week about the actual dynamic of changing our beliefs. But I want to just introduce the concepts today. We want to look at how beliefs, thoughts, feelings, and actions are connected. And this is so important. When I started to learn this material, it changed the way I dealt with so many issues in my life. So how do beliefs, thoughts, feelings, and actions, how are they connected? And there's a picture for you. And so what happens is um, beliefs come from, what did I say, experiences and influential people in our lives, okay? The things we experience cause us to form uh, conclusions which become beliefs and the things that were taught by influential people in our lives that we just accept them as being true okay uh, I, I had one guy and his dad used to say well if your last name is this then you're gonna struggle in life and that's what he was taught if your last name is this you will and so he taught that to his son if your last name is this you will struggle in your life it, basically his name and so as a result grandfather father him and his son all struggled because they had an ungodly belief that your last name determined your destiny. Okay. Uh, and as a, for example, if you had a bad experience with a law enforcement officer, you may conclude that you can't trust any policemen, any law enforcement officers, and that conclusion from your experience becomes a belief. Uh, you, you may have had a good experience with a certain person of a certain political party, and because of that, you had experience that formed a belief that all people of that party now can be trusted. Well, <laughs> nobody's taken that way. It's fun, interesting, right? Okay, anyway, but because the average person, the average person has a lot more negative experiences than positive experiences, the average person. Therefore, most of us have more negative beliefs or ungodly beliefs than we have godly beliefs. And unless we purposely try to change our beliefs, our, we'll be so limited in our lives at the area of our beliefs. But here's the problem. Your thoughts, where do our thoughts come from? Our thoughts come out of our beliefs. Okay? Our thoughts always come out of our beliefs. Uh, every thought we have is, is, a, is a result of what we believe. If, if we think a happy thought, we, it's because we believe there's something to be happy about. If you um, think a sad thought, it's because you believe there's something to be sad about. If you think a, a fearful thought, it's because you believe there's something that you need to be fearful about. So all of our thoughts come out of our beliefs, okay? Which comes out of our experiences, right? And then so our experiences and people inform our beliefs, which form our thoughts, and it's our thoughts that inform our feelings, okay? Our thoughts inform our feelings. So if we feel happy, you, you just check this out. Next time you feel happy, why do you feel happy? Because you had a happy thought. If you feel sad, it's because you had a sad thought. If you feel fearful, it's because you had a fearful thought. So our thoughts inform our feelings. Our feelings are a result of what we think. Okay? And then finally, our actions and our reactions come out of our feelings. Our actions and reactions don't come out of our thoughts, they come out of our feelings. Even if it's just a momentary feeling, that's what triggers our action or our reaction. If, we, if we're happy, right, if we feel happy, we're going to smile. If we feel sad, we're going to frown. If, we're gonna, if we feel angry, we're going to either act or react, right? So all of your actions come out of your feelings, okay? And we need to understand this process because if we're going to change the way we think, we have to understand this process that uh, our beliefs are informed by our experiences and by influential people. Our thoughts come from our beliefs, our feelings come from our thoughts, and our actions and reactions come from our feelings. So why do we react? We react because certain emotions are produced where a situation impacts our beliefs, right? And in situation impacts our beliefs, which cause us to think a certain thought which causes us to feel a certain feeling which causes us to react or react or react. See, situations do not create the feelings. Situations impact our beliefs which cause us to have thoughts which it impact our, which create the feelings, okay? So it's what we believe 
that creates the thoughts, that creates the emotions, which causes us to act in a certain way. Okay, so, so important that we understand that. Uh, for an example, okay, let's, uh, did I do a picture? Yeah. Um, actually, that was, okay, there we go. As an example, um, okay, suppose we have this belief, okay, we have this belief that no matter how hard we try, we're never going to succeed at work. We're never going to be appreciated. We're never going to get ahead at work. We're never going to get that promotion we, des we desire because we believe we'll never be good enough. We'll never perform well enough, okay? So then all of a sudden one day the boss comes to us and said, hey, uh, how you doing? You know, do the small talk. Hey, I'd like to have you come into my office at the end of the day. We need to have a little talk, okay? So what happens? <laughs> Immediately, we're finding ourselves anxious, fearful, worrisome. Why? Because we believe that no matter how hard we try, it's never going to be good enough. So now we're thinking, I'm going to get told off. I'm going to get chastised. I may even lose my job today. Right? We're thinking because of what we believe. We'll never measure up. Okay? And so when our boss invites us into the office, which is the situation I didn't show there, it impacts right away our belief that we'll never perform well enough at work. That's our ungodly belief. And so we start thinking the boss isn't happy with us. Okay? And because we're having that thought, we start having fearful feelings. And as a result, because we, you know, even though we don't have any evidence at all that we're in trouble, we're going to think those thoughts. Okay. We, I'm going to get fired. I'm going to be whatever, laid off, whatever, right? The boss is going to scold me, is going to fire me. And so what do we do? We start to have these negative thoughts. Then we start to have anxious, worrisome, fearful feelings. And then right away, we start to react. How react? Well, maybe we avoid the boss the rest of the day and hope that he forgets, right? <laughs> or maybe we, we uh, um, go home. Oh, I'm not feeling too good. I'm going to go home early today. Yeah. I've, hey, I've seen that one. You know, just like, I'm just suddenly boss. I, I, we're just going to have to wait a couple months, right? Because I'm just not feeling good today. I have to go home right now, right? Or we just go into that room ready to shoot back, right? We're going in this room, and I'm just, and you walk into that room, and you're already ready to get into an argument because you need to justify yourself because you think you actually did perform pretty well this last month, right? So, see, we're, so we come into that room defensive or short-tempered or reactive right away. Why? Because of a situation touched an ungodly belief that created this whole setup of, of feelings, of thoughts, feelings, and emotions, right? Now, the other thing is that by then, by the end of the day, you're also probably going to have a neck ache, right, or maybe a headache from all the stress, the self-stress that you put yourself under because of your negative thoughts, your negative feelings, and your, you know, your negative emotions, right? So, so this is how it works, okay? And, and so often, our, our thoughts, our feelings, and our actions, they're not caused by the situation, they're caused by the, the ungodly belief that we pass, that we interpretate, interpret that situation through. So if that's true, then how do we discover, okay, and as I said, I'm just starting the process today, how do we discover if we have an, an, the ungodly beliefs, okay? Well, we can ask our spouse. That's an, <laughs> that's an easy way. And when they are giving the permission, uh, they'll probably take advantage of it. So, well, as a matter of fact, <laughs> I've been wanting to talk to you about this list of things, okay? Or maybe you ask the Holy Spirit, that's always good, because the Holy Spirit is, is, you know, Bible says that my sheep hear my voice, so the Holy Spirit will talk to us. But there's also an, a, another way that, because I'm more left brain than right brain, I have another way that helps you right brain people. You just get revelations, right? You just get, you know, God just writes it on the wall as you're sleeping. It's like, there it is, right there, right? But for me, if you're more a little bit left brain, uh, this is what I do, okay? There's a thought, too. Mary's volunteered. Okay, I shouldn't do that on, on the video, right? A certain person at the back of the room of the female gender that loves me very greatly would like to volunteer to help expose my ungodly thoughts. Thank you. How can I not feel loved right now? It's like... I feel, I feel, I'm feeling a warm feeling right now because I, a, a, I have a godly belief towards you. 
And so I'm feeling, I'm feeling happy thoughts and happy feelings right now. You may even get a godly hug at the end of this meeting <laughs> because of this process. Thank God for the process, right? Okay. <laughs> but no thanks, right? Yeah, okay. So every action starts with a belief that's impinged by a situation. Okay, so we have to trace every action back to the belief, but we can't just do that. We have to go step by step, okay? And so the first thing we do to discover ungodly beliefs is trace every action to a feeling, okay? Because whenever you react, if you're smart, or if you're wanting to be transformed, let's say, as soon as you, ca you know, catch yourself in that inappropriate action, go, now what was I feeling? What was I feeling at that moment? See, the Bible says in Matthew chapter 14, 26, when the disciples saw him walking out like they were terrified, they had a fearful feeling, and it's a ghost, they said, and so they reacted. They cried out in fear. See, every feeling causes a reaction, right? So if you're going to have a reaction, try to trace back to what the feeling you had at that moment that caused the inappropriate reaction, okay? Figure out what it was, right? The disciples reacted in fear because they had a fearful thought, okay? So whenever we re react in an undesirable way, we have to purposely ask ourselves, what were we feeling at that moment? Just take, try to catch your feeling. Ask yourself, you know, when I reacted, was I feeling threatened? Was I feeling maybe unappreciated, uh, abandoned, uh, um, rejected, ridiculed? Um, ignored? What was I feeling that caused me to have that negative action? So we, that's what we do. The first step is what feeling caused me to react the way I did. Trace every action to a feeling. Okay. Then step number two, as you, well, we'll see that in a second. Proverbs, Psalm 139, 23. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. He said, I have some feelings that are leading to, to some thinking here, right? So even David said, God, show me the thoughts that came out of, what did I just do? Help. Oh, there we go. Okay. Good, because the teens are in teen class now. So, um, yeah, so test my, check my feelings because of what I'm thinking. Basically, David prayed to God. Okay, so here it is now. So what are you doing? We're tracing the feeling. Once we understand the feeling, what was I thinking that caused me to feel the way I did? Okay, um, were we thinking that someone was trying to manipulate us? Were they trying to um, threaten us? Were, they, uh, were we thinking that someone was trying to hurt us, to trick us, deceive us, to humiliate us? What were we thinking that caused that feeling? We identify the specific thought that we were thinking at the moment we felt what we were feeling. Now, the interesting thing about all this is that I've been teaching this for years, and kind of as the Lord showed me, and I was talking to a psychiatrist a couple years ago, and she said, oh, this is cognitive development theory. I went, really? Or no, she called, what do you call it? Cognitive replacement theory. And I go, oh, isn't that nice? The, even the secular world is using this Christian principle now in their counseling with great results, okay? So, see, here's the thing, that just as fever to our, is, is our physical body's way of telling us that something's wrong with our physical body, right? When your temperature goes up, it's because there's something wrong with your physical body. In the same way, emotions are our way of telling us, or God's way of telling us, there's something wrong with our thought life. So whenever your emotions are out of whack, God's trying to tell you there's something wrong with one of your thoughts, okay? And so our goal is not to hide our emotions, which is what a lot of us do, right? Our goal is to instead use our emotions to detect what we're thinking at that moment, okay? What we're thinking that's false. And if we examine our emotions, they will tell us what we were thinking when we had that negative emotion, okay? Um, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5, we demolish arguments, okay? And uh, arguments basically are our thoughts, right, that are 
a, 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 what we call resistive thoughts or whatever, and every pretension, and a pretension is basically a, a belief based or a thought based on a wrong conclusion, right? It's a misperception, whatever, every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God or what God says is true, and so we take captive those thoughts and make them obedient to Christ. So there it is uh, right there. We, we have to take those thoughts captive. We, we, we catch them. We catch our thoughts and see what on earth was I thinking, okay? So we say to ourselves, what, biblically, what argument, what thought, wrong thought was I thinking that was against the knowledge of God? Okay. And, and meaning a contrary to the truth of what God says is true. And we take those thoughts captive, meaning we stop ourselves from thinking them. Just a minute, I'm not going to think that. Okay. Now there's a process we're going to learn next week on how to actually take those thoughts captive. But then there's one more step in, in, our, in our diagram, right? We have to then trace every thought to a belief. Because until you change your beliefs, you cannot change your thinking. You cannot consistently l think different thoughts than what you actually believe about rea is, is true and what is real. Okay? So, um, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13. It is written, I believed, therefore I've spoken what's in my head, what I thought. Right? With that same spirit of faith, we also believe, and therefore we're going to speak what we're thinking about, right? So it's right there in the Bible, the process, we think and we speak what we believe, okay? So the apostles, Paul, he said that he, he spoke what he was thinking because of what he was believing. So we go to that step now. Okay, now we've traced our wrong actions and reactions back to our wrong feeling. Then we trace our wrong feelings back to our thoughts. Now we have to trace our wrong thoughts back to what was I believing or what am I believing that caused me to think all of those negative thoughts, okay? Um, if we're thinking that someone was trying to trick us or humiliate us, then we're probably believing that person is out to get us. That person has something against me. I just believe it to be true. And therefore, everything they do, you're going, they're trying to trick me. They're trying to manipulate me. They're, gonna, they're just using me. I don't know how. I can't even, you know, there's no evidence, but I just got this feeling. Oh, the feeling now, because of what you're thinking, because of what you're believing. Okay? If we're thinking that we might get hurt, we're probably believing that we're in a dangerous situation, even if we're not, right? We get suddenly reactive because we're believing we're in a dangerous situation. So suddenly we're more, therefore we're thinking more reactive thoughts, we're thinking reactive, having reactive feelings, and therefore we're actually reacting and we're staying in that reactive mode, okay? If we're thinking that our boss is going to fire us, then we're probably believing that our performance is not good enough for our employer. You know, I... I I had that happen when I was working in Hamilton, Ontario as, as a, a project engineer at the time, and, and uh, word came down, uh, we were all getting laid off. And I'm going, I'm the junior guy, so of course I'm going to get laid off because I'm, I'm just a new guy. I've only been there for like a year. There's no way I'm going to be kept, right? So I went home and I told Kathy, bad news tomorrow, the boss is calling me in. He's going to fire me, going lay, to lay off everybody because we're in the middle of a, a big downturn in, in production and everything. I went in the next day and sure enough, they called every last person in the whole department into the office. One by one, they came out, yeah, two weeks laid off, I got two weeks, I'm gone, one by one, I'm going in there, and I'm just going, oh God, please, just, please, just give me your peace, because this, this is, I, I just started this job, and I go in there, and the boss says, uh, I've been checking your performance reviews, and I'm going, oh, here it comes, he goes, <laughs> he says, uh, you got the highest performance rating of any of our new employees, no, I couldn't even hear it, right, because of my belief. I couldn't even hear it. Say that again, please. <laughs> anyway, long story short, 22 people in my department, the whole department, 21 got laid off, and they actually saved my job and moved me to another department. Like, wow. But I wasted two days of wrong thoughts and wrong feelings and having wrong reactions because of my belief. And, and, and they, this happens so often. We waste so much of our, our, our emotional energy and our brain power and, and our, our physical tension because of our beliefs. Right? Um, so we have to trace 
our wrong thoughts back to our wrong beliefs. And, 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 and so often, we're, our beliefs are not um, tempered by what God says is true. See, if now today, I know enough, I would just go into my prayer room and say, God, um, what do you want me to believe about tomorrow? Right? I just say, God, what do you, what do you want me, what do you want me to think about tomorrow? And God would have either told me in advance, yeah, you're going to get laid off, but don't sweat it, Dave, I got another job waiting for you. He would say, don't worry, you're protected. Like he would have told me that. Uh, and then I could have walked in peace the next day. I maybe felt guilty because the other 21 guys got, were getting laid off. I don't know. Anyway, so, okay. So, and then after we trace every wrong thought to the wrong belief, then the, then the last step is to reject the wrong belief and say, that's not true. And how do we know it's not true? Because we, we have to find out what is true. You can't really deal with an untrue belief or a negative belief, an ungodly belief, unless you know what the truth is. So what we do is we discover God's truth concerning that issue and speak it over our wrong belief. We say, that's not true. You know, th and this works so well. Let me, I have a friend. Um, he had schizophrenia. And we know schizophrenia, it's all about dopamine levels and your body sending out signals when they're not even supposed to be sending out signals, so you're hearing stuff you, that was never meant to be sent by your brain. Anyway, he had schizophrenia, and he struggled all through his teenage years. And when he was 22, someone taught him this principle. And so every time he heard one of those voices or thought one of those thoughts that was be, just being sent out by spurious uh, synapsis uh, uh, messages in his brain, he said, no, that's not true. This is what God's word says. Next day, or as many times a day as he heard one of those voices or heard a, a lie, no, that's not true. And he did that for a solid year. And you know what happened by the end of the year? He had completely rewired his brain and he was instantly healed of schizophrenia. And he's never had it since. He rewired his physical brain by using God's truth to combat all those, ba those wrong beliefs. This is amazing. And I have another friend, the same thing. He, uh, he had chemically induced schizophrenia, and he was set free by doing the same thing. Okay. So once we determine what we're believing that's wrong, we can substitute or start to change that belief into a belief that is true. And I'll also say this. I used to be the director of a men's mission, and um, on the streets, 30% of the men on the streets have schizophrenia, schizophrenia or other mental illnesses. Another 30% have drug-related issues, alcohol, drugs, whatever. And, and we started practicing these principles that God was teaching me in those days. We were the highest rated, we had the highest rated recovery model in our region of Ontario. Okay, and the, the Ontario Mental Health Association even asked me to join the, one of their, uh, their board, uh, their, one of their committees, because we were higher rated, highest rated until they found out we just got them to memorize and declare God's word, and then they said, well, you're not really welcome here. Because they wanted a chemical solution to a chemical problem. They wanted a, 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 a worldly solution to a spiritual problem. And so they rejected the spiritual solution, God's solution. Anyway, that's an aside. So... Um, so we just find out the truth. We're going to talk about this next week. Find, find out the truth and attack the wrong belief with the right belief. No, God's word says this. Yeah, but, but I believe it doesn't matter. If my, my experience said that, God's word says this. My parents told me this. No, but God's word says this. My teacher said this. No, but God's word says this. And we slowly attack all of those wrong beliefs with God's truth, okay? And... and uh, and that's what it says here, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5. We demolish arguments. We absolutely demolish those thoughts, right, and those pretensions, which are beliefs based upon wrong conclusions that set themselves up against what God says is true, and we take captive those thoughts and make them obedient to Christ, to what Christ says is true. Okay. So once we, in biblical terms, once we've identified our ungodly belief, we can reject or demolish that wrong belief uh, and make it, that belief obedient to Christ by rejecting the lie and believing God's truth instead. And, and, and I can promise you guys and ladies that we, believe, we have so many ungodly thoughts. We have so many ungodly beliefs that we can dismantle. The good news is we can dismantle them. And the more you dismantle your ungodly beliefs, your wrong beliefs, your unbiblical beliefs, the freer you will be. Okay? 
Ephesians chapter 4, verse 22 to 24. Put off your old self. Yeah, we all want, okay, that sounds great. We're going to put off our old self, our old way of living, our old way of thinking, our old way of reacting, all of those old habits. We're going to put off the old self, which is, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires. We're going to be made new, how? In the attitude of your minds, by your believing and your thinking, and then you'll be able to put on the new self. The new, the, new, the, the new identity that you have in Jesus Christ. You can't just put, you know, pretend one day, oh, I'm going to put on Jesus today there. I'm completely changed. I have my new identity. I'm, one, you know, I'm, I'm, one with, I'm a child of Jesus now. If you're still thinking and believing in your mind, your old thoughts, you're not going to embrace your new identity in Christ, which is free and delivered and saved and accepted and loved and, and, and redeemed and... and, and you know, you're just not going to be able to do that unless you deal with your thinking. That's why so many Christians immediately hear they're now in Christ and they struggle for years because they've never dealt with their believing and their thinking. Okay? Okay. So how do we put on the new self? We change our believing and our thinking. So uh, should be kind of a kind of a summary. I just found out my notes I have two summaries. That's interesting. So as we begin this process, here's, what, here's what's going to happen. As we begin this process, we're going to start catching ourselves at the area of our actions and reactions, right? Like, oh, I shouldn't have done that. Oh, man. But, but what was I feeling, okay? So when you're starting, you're going to start at the area of reactions. You're going to use your negative reactions to work your way back to your beliefs. But the more you work through the process, because you've learned how to catch yourself, you'll now start get to the, the feeling and let your feeling say, oh, that's not right, so I'm not going to react. You stop yourself at the air of your feeling, right? And that way people are not going to get your wrath anymore or your reaction or your, or your, sank, your sarcasm <laughs> or any of these other things that I'm so skillful in. Instead, you're going to stop at the air of feeling. I'm, gone, I'm not going to do this anymore. But then as you get real, more and more skilled, you're going to start to catch yourself at the air of your thought. And you're no longer going to have all those negative feelings and all those, you know, those frowns that, you know, the look. You might, the parents give you the look. You know they had some negative thoughts in their head when they, when they gave you the look, right? So... But, but our real goal is not even to stop at the thought level because we don't want to be tormented by our thoughts. We don't want to have thoughts that are still controlling us and tormenting us and making us feel like failures and all that stuff. We want, the goal is to change our belief system. Okay? The goal is to get to this level and change our belief system um, to change every ungodly belief, every false belief, er every unwanted belief into a true belief, a godly belief, so that our thoughts are always in agreement with God's thoughts. And therefore, our, our, if, I'm sorry, if our beliefs are already always in agreement with God's beliefs, then our thoughts are always going to be in agreement with God's thoughts, and our feelings are always going to be in agreement with God's feelings, and our actions and reactions are, are going to be a, the way God will react, and that's a pretty cool place to be. We're actually living and acting like God. But we'll never live and act, become like Christ, because isn't that what the Bible says, that we are predestined to be conformed to the image of Christ? How do, we get, how do we get to our goal? Deal with our belief system, okay? Because um, mm -hmm. that, that's what we want. We want to actually live the way God lives. We want to live the way Jesus lives. But we'll never live like Jesus unless we believe like Jesus and therefore think like Jesus and feel like Jesus, right? Um, so uh, one final example. I think I have one final push. One more time. Looks like we're not going any further. Could someone... There, oh, there we go. I just want to have someone push a button. Okay, a final example. Okay, so wrong belief. There's something wrong with me, right? We call that shame. There's something, I don't know what it is, there's just something wrong with me. Well, if we really believe that, we're going to think lots of thoughts like, no one likes me, I'll never be accepted by my peers because there's something wrong with me. So no one, no one wants to be my friend. And as a result, we'll start to become discouraged. We'll start to feel discouraged and hopeless and rejected and sad and depressed and all those things. And we'll get to the wrong action. We'll start to isolate. We'll withdraw from people. We'll hide from people. We'll stay home from people, we'll just avoid people, okay? But if we can work our way backwards from that wrong action to the wrong feeling, the wrong thinking, the wrong belief, and then say, okay, God, what is the truth? 
What is the truth about this? And we discover the truth is, hey, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I'm designed by God, and I'm fully accepted by him. I'm accepted in the beloved, the Bible says. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. God created me for a plan and a purpose, and therefore there's something in me that's worth getting to know. I may not have a lot of talents, but I know there's something in me that people need to hear. And if you start and you attack the, the wrong belief with that God's truth, then you'll start thinking the right thoughts. I am valuable. I'm worth getting to know. I have much to contribute to other people. And then you'll start feeling the right feelings. I'll have joy. I'll have a sense of acceptance. I'll have a sense of worth. I'll have peace. And then you'll have the right reactions. You'll start to re be relational. You'll start to interact. You'll reach out. You'll make friends. You'll bless other people. You'll suddenly be the people... Pe the person people want to spend time with because you have such, because you know that there's something in you, you know? Yeah, I'm going to do this, yeah. Um, years ago, year 2000, I think it was, yeah, 2000, 2001, I used to go to all these conferences, right? And I'd walk in the room with that belief. I would actually walk in the room with that belief. I'd planted Destiny Church, 10 years, we growing, God was doing great things, but in my head was still this negative belief. And the belief was, there's something wrong with me. Why would people want to get to know me? I'd walk in these conferences, nobody would pay attention to me. Nobody would want to talk to me. Nobody would invite me to their table. I'd walk in, I'd be all alone, and I would sit off in my little chair, you know. Yeah, need, I really need that hug now, right? So, anyway, but I learned this truth. And I started to apply that truth that I'm wonderfully designed by God, I'm fully accepted by him, and therefore, I have something to share. And I started to break through in the area of my belief that this was the truth. The very next conference I went to, I walked into the room, and I walked in the room, and suddenly people went up to me, hey man, good to see you, why don't you come and sit at our table? See, I, okay, Bill Johnson says it this way, your internal reality creates your external reality. And when my internal reality changed from why would anyone want to get to know me to I have something worth sharing and people need to hear what I have to say, suddenly I started to attract all these people to me. And I went from being this loner and this person nobody spent time with that suddenly everybody wanted to hear what I had to say. Now, I didn't have any more wisdom than I had the day before. I didn't have any more knowledge than I had the day before. But now I had a change of belief that changed my thinking, which changed my feelings, which changed my, reaction, my actions, and became attractional to other people. Okay. So, um, okay. So, our battle that we're going to talk more about next week, and I'm going to give you the really practical tools on how to change your beliefs next week. But our battle starts with taking every thought captive and only allowing those thoughts that are in line with our right beliefs, okay? which are based upon God's truth. And again, I'll just read that to you one more time. Do not conform, Romans 12, 2, do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good will, his pleasing will, his acceptable will. And as I said, next week we're going to go more into detail on that. These are just the basic principles that I want, the foundation I want to give you, and we'll, I said I'll give you lots of tools next week how to do this, because God wants you to be transformed. He wants you to be free. Okay? Bible says it is for freedom that Christ set you free. So he's already set you free, but you can't walk in that freedom and experience that freedom until you've won the battle for your mind. Because it's our mind that controls our thoughts, our feelings, and our actions. Okay? So what are we going to do? Well, let's invite God to help us discover all those beliefs and thoughts that are not in agreement with his truth. And then let's this week begin to analyze our actions and feelings in order to identify which thoughts and beliefs are not in agreement with God's truth and just make note of them. Just on a piece of paper, make note of them and say, okay, when I learn the next skills next week, I'm going to start to attack all those negative thoughts and all those negative beliefs, okay? But we're going to have to go back to the belief level because you cannot consistently think godly thoughts if you have an ungodly belief, Okay? Let me pray for you, and then we're going to do what we normally do at the end of the service. We're going to bless uh, you all, and uh, yeah, and then we're going to, in less than 20 minutes, we're going to have corn by faith. <laughs> Father, we just thank you so much. We thank you, God, that you've given us a biblical process 
by whereby we can be changed. We can become the people that you want us to become, and we can become the people that we want to become simply by using your biblical principles to experience biblical transformation, and we can come into the freedom for which you've set us free. So I pray, we pray, that you will help us to discover uh, God, just come, be part of the process. As, as David said, search me, O oh God. Check out all my feelings, all my thoughts. Help us, God. Help us, God. To discover every belief that is not of you. And Lord, help us as we begin to expose those things to us. That we can be ready to tear them down. And as your word says, I love that word, to demolish them. Just like a contractor demolishes a building, you want us to demolish those ungodly beliefs and thought structures in our head so that we can be free. And the limits come off, and then we can indeed do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Lord, give us your grace, we pray. Yeah, give us your grace, we pray, to embrace your truth so that we can be free and all the limits can come off. In Jesus' name, and God's people said, amen. Amen. Okay.